We are doing Extra Life again this year where you can mash buttons, roll dice, play games, and help kids along the way. I hope you'll be a part of that with us. Stick around after the video for more information. The truth will set you free. Hey guys, Peter Franson here from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions. Right now I'm going to attempt to examine the Bible and dissect some of the churchy language we can easily take for granted, digging into history and languages as I'm able to try and get at the heart of the text so that we can hopefully see and then apply some of what God has for us in these words today. Now, I'm not formally trained in scripture. I'm just a guy using resources and a questioning mind to try and get at the truth. And that's something that we can all do, so I hope that you will be doing that with me. We've been going through the book of Proverbs and have now arrived at chapter 6, verses 20 through 24. In the ESV that reads, My son, keep your father's commandment and forsake not your mother's teaching. Bind them on your heart always. Tie them around your neck. When you walk, they will lead you. When you lie down, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will talk with you. For the commandment is a lamp and the teaching a light and the reproofs of discipline are the way of life to preserve you from the evil woman, from the smooth tongue of the adulteress. All right, so go on just a one or two verses at a time, starting with verse 20 again. My son, keep your father's commandment and forsake not your mother's teaching. These verses seem to call back to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9, when God told Israel how they should live as his chosen people group. He started by giving them commands and instructions about how to live in this special relationship with him, and he specifically gave parents the responsibility to teach their children what God had instructed and commanded them to do. So the assumption made with Proverbs 6 verse 20 at the start here is that the father and mother mentioned had been teaching the son God's commands and his teaching, not merely their own. Um, Verse 21, bind them on your heart always, tie them around your neck. This also calls back to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9, specifically verses 8 and 9, which instruct Israel to make physical reminders of God's instructions so they would be constantly present on their minds. Uh, although some religious leaders turn these commands into empty ritual involving literal scripture in small containers strapped to their heads, the reference to being bound on your heart is clearly getting at something deeper, something more personal. Uh, if wearing something or doing something physically is helpful, then great. But what God really wants is for his people to always have his teaching and his words in mind, shaping them as they navigate daily life. Verse 22, when you walk, they will lead you. When you lie down, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will talk with you. So verse 21 was a call to take action so that God's instruction will be on our minds in every circumstance. This one, verse 22, describes the effects of doing that. Scripture is given by God to guide us as we go about our day. It's not meant to be this segmented thing. We have a little quiet time, a Bible study, whatever, and then we check that box and then move on with our day uh, without really thinking about the, the, the things that we learned or were reminded of. No, they're meant to be on our minds throughout the day. This is really challenging for me. And shaping our, our decisions and our perspective about the things that just the mundane daily things that we're experiencing. So there, uh, scripture is given by God to guide us as we go about our day, to protect us from pitfalls in life because God loves us. He wants us to avoid those things and to provide a significant element of relationship with the Holy Spirit who orchestrated the words of scripture to be written as they were and who presently reveals their relevance to us individually as we study and meditate on them. Verse 23, for the commandment is a lamp and the teaching a light and the reproofs of discipline are the way of life. Now, this was interesting to me. We normally have negative associations with words like command, commandment, reproof, discipline, even teaching to some degree. Those words can kind of just be a drag in the contexts that we tend to hear them. But the author points out that God's commands provide light to keep us from stumbling in the darkness of this life. In addition, the Hebrew word for life 
here is not merely about keeping a pulse and continuing breathing, but it's also about experiencing a vitality and fullness of life and being prosperous. God's discipline is in part to teach us how to live the kind of rich and full life that he wants us to have. Verse 24 now, to preserve you from the evil woman, from the smooth tongue of the adulteress. The Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of the Old Testament that was used by the writers of the New Testament, translates evil woman instead as wife of a neighbor. And just a slight revocalization of the Hebrew manuscripts results in the same meaning in Hebrew. This seems to suggest that the specific warning here uh, that was intended is against entering into a sexual or romantic relationship with the spouse of another person. That seems to be the specific focus and context here. Given then that adultery is the context of these verses and those that will follow, we can see by implication, I think, what ignoring God's warning against adultery adultery tends to bring into our lives, specifically stumbling into life's pitfalls, a lack of vitality and prosperity, and disconnection from relationship with God. I mean, it's just, uh, it seems like a simple isolated thing. It's just, it's just uh, my sexual experience, just my sex life, quote unquote. But uh, it, it has major effects on all kinds of areas in our lives that God wants us to avoid. Uh, although adultery may seem appealing and those who would tempt us may be persuasively enticing, as, as is indicated by the reference to uh, the adulterers having a smooth tongue, the consequences for our lives are not remotely worth it. And we'll see even more of that in the, uh, the upcoming verses. But for now, what's in these verses that may be specifically applicable to geeks? Well, a number of geeks have had diff I want to say this at the start, just given that first verse of the ones we've looked at today. A number of geeks have had difficult relationships with their parents, so you might look at these verses and be reminded of failure on the part of your parents. Or if you are a parent, you may look at these verses and feel uh, the responsibility that's intended for you as you raise your kids. Uh, and I think those are you know things that are worth kind of thinking about and processing. But even setting the parenting aspect aside, these verses are largely about keeping God's teaching on our minds as we navigate life and specifically navigate sexuality. You may not be remotely in danger of having an affair, but Jesus famously taught that just looking at someone with lust is the same as committing adultery with them in our hearts. That's Matthew 5, 27 and 28. Now, this naturally, I think, applies to pornography, but also to other visual entertainment. As geeks, we're often living these fairly secluded and private lives in terms of how we spend our time. And in that context, it's very easy to develop unchallenged ideas and habits about our, our sexuality. Men typically struggle more with lusting after visual depictions of women. Women may deal with uh, uh, more with developing selfish and unreasonable expectations of men. Because of these tendencies, it's so important for us to intentionally learn about and meditate on God's intent for sexuality and romantic relationships, uh, preferably doing that in ongoing transparency with another believer. Even speaking for myself as a happily married man, not engaged in pornography, allowing myself to look at or think about sexualized depictions of women has an effect on my expectations of my wife and my relationship with her. Uh, entertainment is always competing in our hearts with what God has revealed about his intent for sex. And to the degree that we are not vigilant, we will unknowingly adopt broken ideas about sex that lead us to pitfalls in life, to a lack of fulfillment, and to disconnection from God, instead of experiencing the far better life that God wants us to have. If you'd like some help finding a good church in your area, I would love to help you do that if I can. Online resources and communities are good supplements, but by nature they just can't speak to your particular situation like relationships in a local church can. The context for almost everything in the New Testament assumes that we're serving and building purposeful relationships in a local church. So whether you're in a church that just kind of lacks Bible-based intentionality or maybe not attending any church at all, if I can help you get connected to an authentic, compassionate, Bible-oriented church, 
I want to do that. Uh, you can email me at p a e t e r at spiritblade.com, and we can look at some websites of churches in your area together.